as you can probably guess, the key to an electric car is, well, the electric. In this first part of my EV Tech mini-series, I'm going to take a look at what the electric in electric vehicle means. This mini-series will hopefully give you all the background you'll need to follow along with my Ultra No Frills Caterham 7 electric vehicle conversion. This video is part of my Putting the EV in 7 project, where we're taking an unloved 10-year-old Caterham 7 drift car and converting it to be an electric vehicle. We're removing the internal combustion engine and putting in an electric motor, batteries and control electronics to create an EV interpretation of the classic 1957 pocket rocket, at the end of which we hope to be able to say whether converting such an iconic car really is an option for future conversions. As the project progresses, there'll be a mixture of explainer and progress videos. But it's these explainer videos that I'll keep asking you to come back to if you want to know what's in this EV project and what some widget or other does. These explainer videos are going to be relatively technical, so I'll try and keep the content to about high school level physics and then explain the more technical stuff as we go. As such, I'll be glossing over some of the more nuanced aspects of EV design. So if you're a more advanced viewer, please just accept that I've glossed over anything beyond the basics. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some videos that go into the more advanced stuff. The first explainer video is all about electricity, covering the basics of different forms of electricity used in an EV. In the second video, we'll then take a more detailed look at the components we'll need to use in the conversion and a look at the block diagram of the project. At that point, we should have all the basic principles of a no frills EV nailed down. And then we can get back to the actual progress of my project car. And if this is your first time watching this series, then my intro video, which you can find in the video description, will give you some of the why I do this, along with the background to the project and what I'm trying to achieve. So to get us going, we should start by making sure we're up to speed on some of that high school physics I was talking about earlier. And specifically one key aspect of an EV, the electric bit in the electric vehicle. Fundamentally, the electricity in an electric vehicle is all about making it go. Instead of burning fossil fuels in an internal combustion engine, we use electrical power to turn a motor to make us move forwards or backwards. To break that electric down a bit further, we use two forms of electricity in an EV, direct current and alternating current. AC and DC are both just electrons moving around an electrical circuit. And to explain the concept, I'm going to use a diagram of an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope, or scope, displays time along the horizontal axis and voltage on the vertical axis. A scope can therefore show us voltage levels as time passes. As well as showing us voltage, scopes are good at showing us high speed events. By adjusting the time it takes for the scope to draw on the screen, known as its time base, we can take very high speed voltage changes and capture them like we're using a slow motion camera. Oscilloscopes display voltage. So what's all this about direct and alternating current? Well, voltage and current changes in an electrical circuit are related to each other. As one changes, so will the other. This relationship is known as Ohm's law and is written as V equals I times R, or voltage equals current times resistance. And so we can see if we increase the voltage, so the current would also increase too. We could get more in depth here, looking at some other forms of resistance known as impedance but this is one of those bits we're going to gloss over for the moment and just say that if we're interested in currents in a circuit, then we can infer what's going on by looking at the voltage on an oscilloscope screen. Direct current, or DC, is used to store electrical power in the vehicle's battery pack until we need it. And in some cases, it's also used to charge the vehicle too. Direct current refers to a constant current or voltage supply that doesn't change over time. You can see that as the scope draws a DC voltage across its display. A battery and a torch is a good example of a DC voltage supply. When we turn the switch of the torch on, the DC voltage of the battery allows a current to flow around the circuit. The electrical energy is used up by the resistance of the light bulb, which heats up the bulb filament, making it glow to give off light. Again, we're glossing over fluorescent and LED lights here for the sake of simplicity. The key thing here is that we can store the energy needed to light the torch in the DC powered battery. Alternating current, or AC, 
is used to make the motor turn. And because we have both those forms of electricity, we'll also have to convert the DC power from the battery into AC power for the motor. We'll talk about that in more detail in part two of this video series. Here we can see an alternating current being displayed on the scope screen. Its voltage switches between both positive and negative as time passes. Remember, we're interchanging current and voltage here because we're glossing over things. In this case, the line being drawn is a sine wave, and we'll come back to that in a bit. With AC circuits, electrons first flow in one direction and then the other. We can create a similar light bulb circuit to the battery and torch we saw earlier, but this time the current source is an electricity grid, sometimes called mains, and the bulb is a home light bulb. But this time, when we turn on the switch, the current flow isn't just flowing in one direction, it alternates or changes direction. In mains or grid supplied AC electricity, the switch from one direction to another takes the shape of a sine wave. The voltage repeatedly rises and falls between a positive peak and a negative peak. The number of times the sine wave repeats per second is known as its frequency, and we can measure it in cycles per second or hertz. One hertz is one sine wave cycle per second. Now we know the basics of alternating current. Let's look more closely at EVs, where the AC also has another couple of key characteristics. Firstly, the AC in an electric vehicle has a highly variable frequency. It will go from zero hertz, remember hertz is cycles per second, when the car is stationary, up to many thousands of cycles per second when the car is at full speed. We'll come on to this again in later videos, but the frequency of the AC power that's fed to the motor is what determines how fast it spins and how fast we go. Most modern EVs use AC to drive their motors, but they also typically use what is called three-phase AC. Three-phase AC is three of the sine waves we've been talking about to this point, applied to the motor at the same time. Each sine wave is called a phase, where the three phases will have the same voltage and frequency, but offset by one third of a cycle. Phew, now we know what AC and DC are. There are two final things to bear in mind while talking about EV electricity. Firstly, safety. Electricity is dangerous. The sorts of currents and voltages we'll be using in our conversion could kill. So we need to be careful to use appropriate procedures and clothing when dealing with live components. I also strongly recommend that if you're thinking of doing your own EV conversion, then take an EV safety course. A well put together course will give you an understanding of the dangers as well as important practical experience of how to be safe when working with high voltages and currents. I took a course from Felton, but there are recognized courses popping up in most countries now. Secondly, all this talk of voltages and current flowing sounds pretty simple, right? Well. It's actually way more complicated than that in practice. There's a lot of electromagnetic and electrical theory to get into if you really want to understand the physics of how an EV works. And as we'll see in future videos, it's not just about the theory. There are very practical consequences of high voltages and currents flowing around a vehicle. In this first part of our Understanding EV Tech mini-series, we covered how DC has a constant voltage and is used to store electrical energy in a battery, how AC changes over time, and that we use three-phase AC to power a motor. In part two, we'll cover the basic components of my simple EV conversion. If you'd like more in-depth videos on anything I've covered here, then please let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to put one together. So stay tuned. Hit the like button to help out the channel, and the subscribe button to get updates as they come. And as always, stay safe and happy blatting.